Hello Sagittarius. Welcome to the channel. This is Estoincha here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. And keep in mind that I will be channeling only my higher self. I don't deal with other energies when I am um, interpreting the cards or when I am pulling out the cards. So there's no spirit. I don't deal with spirits, good or bad, in this particular area. So the only time I do channel is at the end of the video. That is to Archangels Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel. Some of you may have been in a relationship. Some of you may have broken up from this relationship. For some of you, you may be in a situationship with this individual. And for others of you, you feel like as though somebody's taken advantage of you on an energetic level. You may not have actually <clears throat> been with this person when it comes to having an actual physical connection. It might have just been energetic. So you can be staring at someone from across the room every day. And you know there's something special there, but nobody's saying anything. So one of those kind of scenarios. You have quite an array of cards here. You have some nice cards and some are a bit challenging. <clears throat> so you have here, first card is the strongest, victim, followed by love, cycles, growth, illusion, awakening, laughter, creativity, boundaries. I'm going to express to you, Sagittarius, what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Sagittarius, in this connection, I know that you have given me a lot, emotionally, spiritually, physically, even energetically. And I have turned you into the victim. I have victimized you and everything that I've done where I have overindulged, where I have taken advantage, where I have only used and manipulated. All of that I realize now, that was all me. And I shouldn't have done that. And I just realized that that this is what I've done. Do I have any regrets right now? I'm still thinking about it. But why is this bothering me so much now? <clears throat> it bothers me because I realize that no matter what happens, I have this strange kind of love for you, this this unconditional love, it just doesn't go away. No matter what happens, no matter where I go, what I do, I just feel that there is this constant energy of love that flows, like a river that flows underneath many, many layers of earth. It's that river that just doesn't stop. It's constant. It's unconditional love. And now I'm starting to obsess over this. I'm starting to obsess over the connection that you and I have together. It is very overwhelming. It is very special. And thinking about it, 
just has me wondering, why did I do what I did? It goes on and on in my mind, and a cycle comes and goes, comes and goes. <clears throat> I realize that I have taken advantage of you, and everything was very sudden, was very fast. But the problem is, with this speed, I was actually not able to truly see who you really were on the inside. I never really learned who you were. And now I want to grow and I want to get to know you more. I want to learn with you. I want to grow with you. I want to learn about your past, what you were like, what are your fears, what are your worries. What are your plans for the far future? Before, I didn't do any of that. All I did was victimize you. I had no interest in learning more about you. But now things have changed because I realize that I do have love for you. All of this has led me to hide. I hide behind a veil, behind a false mask. I don't show my true colors. I may act as if everything is okay, but in reality, I am contemplating and I'm thinking about the things that I've done because I am embarrassed. I'm embarrassed for treating you like this. You didn't deserve this. You deserved better. You deserved an individual that's going to learn with you, grow with you, learn more about you, and not just about your body. And I've come to this awakening moment now where I realize that you and I truly could be good friends. We were not before. You thought you were, but I was not in that mindset. I see things through your eyes now. I've put myself in your shoes. And I realize now that many things are different. Many things have changed. And all I want is to have friendship with you. Good friendship. Wonderful friendship. A chance to be happy. You make my heart happy. You know what makes me tick. I want to create something with you. Something long lasting for the world to see. So many things we have done come and gone. And I never really absorbed or valued the time and the memories that we had and built. For this reason right now, so many things have happened in between that boundaries are necessary. This is part of the reason why I have kept my boundaries. These boundaries exist because I can't do anything else if I don't keep these boundaries up. Then I, didn't, I wouldn't know how to open up to you. I keep these boundaries up because I'm hiding from you behind a veil, behind a false mask, because I turned you into a victim. And so I keep these boundaries up. Why? Because I'm also embarrassed. I don't know how to deal with you or with the situation. So I keep my distance. For me, that's safe. And that's what I feel comfortable with right now. All right, Sagittarius. So some of you were in a connection here where it did seem that you might have thought it was a bit more on the romantic side long term. However, either you or this person, I'm seeing that this person thinks that they did this to you. A lot of victimization, a lot of manipulation, 
sexual manipulation, emotional manipulation, psychological manipulation, um, a lot of manipulation, um, a lot of what I'm getting is, what do you call it, gaslighting. I'm getting that with this card too, gaslighting. I'm getting words on and off, in and out, that type of relationship. This person basically loved you as a friend or they love you as a friend and they wanted more. But they did not get to that point where it would be like a 100% commitment, like being with you or coming back to you. The energy that they have here is that more of a friend, somebody that loves a friend and wants to get to know the other person. Now, some of you may have been in a relationship and then it broke down. Now you're restarting it again. Or some of you may have just started a relationship and this is how it ended out or ended up. Sorry. So, yeah, it's um, well, the one card that's really good is love. However, the overall arching theme is the boundaries card. So that does talk about there's distance here. This could be actual physical distance or it could be just emotional distance. You can still be in the same house or apartment or flat or wherever you live. You could still be in the same place, right? But you are totally two different people and you are not talking to each other. So there are boundaries. Boundaries doesn't have to actually mean physical boundaries. It could just mean emotional boundaries um, or actual physical, being close but actually feeling as if you're far apart. All right. Hopefully my throat won't keep doing what it's doing. It feels better now. Could have been just the energy, throat chakra. Person's kept boundaries. They're not talking to you. They're choking up. All right. We have here the Lover's Path Tarot. So these are any types of issues that may have occurred in the first place that caused the problem. The King of Staves, okay. And we have the Nine of Cups. Oh my, okay. Not good because this is in the reverse. So we have the King of Staffs. Let's have a look. Okay. King of Staffs. We have here how once upon a time, the person of interest may have seemed to be very confident. They were a master of many skills and they were very, very supportive or it seemed to you as if they would have been supportive. This was somebody at the time that could have brought ideas to fruition, creating inspiration and providing help. But at some point in time, Sagittarius, this person started to behave differently and they realized that they were no longer feeling confident. They were not being able to well, they were not able to master their skills and they definitely were not being supportive. It says here, wanting to harness these forces but not quite able to do so and not strong enough to do so. Someone who seems supportive but isn't reliable. So this is something bad now because this talks about somebody who you might have thought is going to be there for you, who's going to be always, you know, there if you need them but they were not. Um, this talks about not being reliable. Reliable, dependable. So the reason why is they started to feel different on the inside. Their feelings started to change. Here we have the Nine of Cups. Let's have a look at the Nine of Cups. All right. Wow. Complacency, taking a relationship for granted, overindulging in the relationship, the inability to receive pleasure, and finally having dissatisfaction. Oh my God, person's damn blunt. Okay, 
So this person was very complacent, okay? The one thing that was happening here, remember how I told you with the victimization card? There was somebody who's taking advantage. They were overindulging. And this is the problem because you got the same word in this card, overindulgence. Uh, taking a relationship for granted, so they just kept taking advantage, as I mentioned earlier. And so they didn't value you. And this is why they started taking it for granted and they were overindulging. Eventually, something that they were having too much of, it started to not become as mysterious and adventurous as it felt before. And at that point, they were unable to receive any pleasure emotionally from this connection because they were only focusing on the physical. And ultimately, they started to feel dissatisfaction. Now, Sagittarius, was this your fault? This is a general reading love reading. It's not going to resonate with everybody. But was this your fault for some of you that may resonate with it? No, it wasn't. You know those times when people say that breaking up with you and they, and they say, you know what, it's not you, it's me. That is this particular situation. You have given them everything, all of the love that they would have wished for. Even after you gave it to them, it still wasn't enough. It wasn't good enough. It did not fill these cups. It was empty. Why was this person empty? Because something inside of them has always been empty. They have never really been able to become that person that you wanted them to. In any relationship, this is not just with you. Even if they're with somebody else, they might act as if everything is okay because they're really good at acting. But the truth is, this is going to be different. They are never going to be able to settle down in the way that a regular couple would because their mindset is different. This could be because of the type of family they come from, the type of um, background they have, how they grew up, what type of uh, relationship they saw in their family with their parents or with their uncle and aunts, and all that stuff. Like something here has happened that has changed their perspective on what true love is and what they truly wish for. They had everything, yet they were still not satisfied, you see. That means that there's an emptiness somewhere else that needs to be fulfilled first. That needs to be filled first. Once that's filled, then the rest of this individual will start to feel equally as balanced. That is why this person has not been able to be with you, because they themselves are incomplete. It's not good to be with somebody who is so broken that you cannot have a proper relationship with. And it's not your job to fix the person. It's not your job to be the therapist for that person. You don't want to love them and heal them. Oh, I feel so sorry for them. I always want to be there for them. Yeah, you're being a doormat. Let's not do that. That person has support system. They have people in their life. They have resources in their life. Even if you think that they don't, they do. Why? Because we live on planet Earth and we have billions of people. There's people. People help each other. And somebody needs to take the initiative and go out there and change their perspective on life. That can't be you. You can be supportive to some degree. But what are they doing? They're overindulging. They're taking advantage. You keep giving, they keep taking. The only way you can change their perspective is by not giving them what it is that you have been. By stopping what it is that you're doing, you will trigger something and then they will start to behave differently. Give that a try. See what happens. Because at this point, you are perfectly fine, Sagittarius. It's actually this person. They have some type of like trauma or emotional trauma or something like that going on in their life. And that's one of the biggest issues that they're having. This is why, not just with you, but any relationship, they might not be able to settle down. Like, I've done readings where, like so many readings, where people will settle for the person. But the problem is, is that are they actually truly in love with that person? No, they're not. Some of them do it for security, financial security, and just someone to be in bed with them. And that's it. Companionship. And that's it. 
but there's no actual like real love or passion. In fact, that individual may be in love with somebody else. I have seen that. It's extremely common. Hopefully I'll make a video on that one day on my other channel, Asnoichi Audio. But I have seen this. And so no matter what you do, sometimes you just can't change a person's decision, a person's behavior, because that's who they are. The only thing is, is that that person needs to find somebody who can balance them. But that might not be you. Because if you're looking for a perfect fit, both of you wouldn't be going through this. This is not a perfect fit. That's why right now this is all happening. But sometimes things take time. And eventually this person will learn from their mistakes. All right, let's have a look here. This is the Rider Waite deck, not the Rider Waite. This is the Beginner's Tarot deck, similar to the Rider Waite. We have the Knight of Pentacles and we have the Queen of Cups. These are any actions, any intentions, any plans that this person might have towards you in the coming future. <clears throat> Interesting. They do. Oh my. So we have here the Knight of Pentacles. So this does talk about how this person wants to come back into your life. Slow and steady wins the race. This is actually a good card. Some people call this a slow ass knight. I actually like this knight because this knight has thought long and hard about this entire connection. In their mind, they've been there, done that. They have experienced and thought of all the scenarios, all of the things. And when they're coming back, <clears throat> They're coming back, sorry, <clears throat> they're coming back as somebody who is wiser. Because they're coming back slowly, they're not as impulsive. Before, they may have been very impulsive, very rash with their decisions, impulsive, um, if I already said that, or compulsive. Uh, they were just very take action first and think later. But you see, that's a problem because at that point in time, then nobody progresses anywhere because whatever you thought was going to be a promise no longer ends up being a promise. So with the Knight of Pentacles, I personally like this card, but it, because it means this person has thought long and hard about the situation. They have retreated, they've thought about it, and now they're coming steadily with a secure offer towards you. So, you know, do I see action here? Definitely with the Knight, with the Knight of Pentacles. Yeah, this person is going to reach out to you. We also have here the Queen of Cups. They finally recognize you as that one individual that gives them unconditional love. They see this, they sense this, they feel this, they admire this. And this is what they want because they, they see that they're not going to get this from anywhere else. You see, Sagittarius, you have boundaries, right? You had boundaries under the bottom of the deck. Boundaries is good. Because boundaries gives you both breathing space, time to think and reflect and to concentrate on what really matters. Before, you didn't have that. And for that reason, there was a lack of thought being put into it. But now because there was some distance, this person had time to ponder, to think about things, to fix things in their mind. So they recognize the value of you. We also have here the Five of Swords. There are a few people around who are causing problems. This could be family, friends, society, whatever. Um, but there are other people. And the people that we have here are in competition. It's uh, actually competitive. There's some ego-oriented competition in this connection. This could be other people who are also jealous, maybe some rumors, some people who are causing problems. But also this person realizes that there are other people in this connection potentially and they're starting to feel fear they don't want them to have you so what they're going to try to do is have you to themselves they're going to try to win you and have that victory now it's funny because this person out of all of the cards you have a queen you have a, a knight you even have an emperor here under the bottom of the deck but the last card here is a page of cups, a little page, a little person. 
shy person. This person is going to come to you with an apology or they could come to you with an offer that doesn't even seem like an offer. They may just want to talk to you and just say hi and just linger there a little more, smiling. You'll know that this person doesn't have the courage. They're not as bold as they used to be. Let me tell you, they are bold because they are the emperor, but when it comes to approaching you and starting this connection off once again, reigniting this connection, they are extremely nervous and they are extremely shy. They're embarrassed too. So keep in mind Sagittarius, when this person comes back into your life, they are not going to approach you in a very bold manner. They're going to be very soft and gentle about it. Maybe just, you know, hey, how you doing? And that's it. Then for a few weeks or so, you don't hear from them. But the fact is that they got the ball rolling, right? So you do have something here where you have the action from the Knight of Pentacles. Then you have the Page of Cups. I do see action here in this uh, particular spread, which is really good. Some of the other readings I did, there's not a lot of action. There's just a lot of thinking. Over here, this person's ready for action. We also have here under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme is the Emperor. Very nice. So the Emperor does talk about how in this connection there is this realization that they want to provide you with absolute love and security. Also, the Emperor is somebody who may love you the way that they know how to love, but they may not love you the way you want to be loved. They have a different way of loving. And so not everybody always resonates with the same manners that somebody else has. So this person definitely wants to give you security. They do. They're very serious about it. And they do feel, they, they might be, for some of you, you might feel that this person has narcissistic tendencies and there are various levels to that. They have that. They also feel, I mean, they also have this personality of being a bit dominating. So just be a little wary of that. All right, let's have a look at another set that is the Archangel Answer Cards. Okay, oops, just gonna do a quick prayer first. All right, these messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel. Improving health. So first card's the strongest. Health is wealth, Sagittarius. You need to start taking care of your health. Now, health doesn't only mean the physical. Spiritually, emotionally, physically. Start to take care of yourself. Here we also have ask your angels. So you can, the way I do it, you don't have to do it that way, but this is the way I do it. I pray to the Christ consciousness in my mind's eye. Then I reach his father, Jehovah. He has other names. From there I call upon archangels, Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel, through the permission of both Jesus and his father. So they actually work for them. It's kind of like a, like a hierarchy, right? Um, so you ask for, per for permission, but you tell the angels what it is that you would like to have done. You tell them about your problems, and then intuitively you will start to receive answers. Here we have within the next few months, you actually have a timeline. The next few months. Okay, no, within the next few months. Some of you may have thought that this is going to be very far into the future, or maybe... Um, very close in time but they're saying no this is going to take a few months there's going to be compromise that's good <clears throat> sorry two i'm putting them back they came out there's something better and take action but i don't feel that coming out two of them came out but it wasn't uh me shuffling we have listened to didn't i just say that i just said that when you ask your angels, you're going to be getting answers and you're going to have to listen to your intuition. I just said that. So yes, do listen to your intuition because there's going to be a compromise. The compromise that you're going to get is basically 
a, a situation where you're going to have to let go a little bit of the problems and they will let go a little bit and you have to accommodate them, they accommodate you and then you both meet in the middle. You remember earlier how I said this person's not ready but you're ready? Well that's what they're saying here is that you are ready for this particular <clears throat> This particular kind of situation that you find yourself in you are ready however they are not there's going to be a lot of abundance in this connection provided there are and there is compromise if there's no compromise nothing's going to work out so Sagittarius with the two cards that did come out one of them is a huge meaning though when there's something better two things there's something better than the situation and there's something better than the person. What I'm getting here is that you still want to be with this person, the majority of you. If you don't, then most likely this reading is not for you. Um, but this message is for those of you that probably want to make things work. They are saying here that things are possible within the next few months, but there has to be a compromise in order to do that. For some of you, there's something better than this person. And for others of you, there's something better than the situation that you're in. Either way, the angels here are saying that you're ready. You're ready because emotionally, spiritually, physically, you have been ready for a long time. You're the one who's already prepared to be in a connection, in a relationship, even be more committed. But the other person, they were not ready. So compromise can mean many things. You might have to adjust according to them, their lifestyle, their beliefs, but they also have to adjust to you as well. Otherwise, it won't work out. It has to literally be built both ways. That's the only way it's going to work out. So Sagittarius, that is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity and some guidance in your situation. Do let me know in the comments below. I just want to have a quick peek. I want to ask just one more <coughs> card. Communicate clearly. Communicate clearly is important. Oh wow, look at this. Under the bottom of the deck we have romance. So, Sagittarius, some of you have not been able to communicate as clear as you used to. Um, but when the time comes, don't overwhelm this person with too much information. They can only handle a certain amount of information. If too much information is given, then they may get lost in the details and they won't remember what's truly important. Under the bottom of the deck, this was literally like so intuitive. This is the only card, Romance. That's the best card in the house. I love this card because this talks about how this is a spiritual connection. You have a spiritual connection. And this card overpowers all of this. This is like the umbrella that covers all of this. It's all enveloped in a romance. This is a spiritually bound romance. This is either your twin flame, your soulmate, your karmic partner. Um, maybe more, but those are the most powerful. This individual that you're dealing with, they also find it hard to let go. And they also find it very difficult um, how to balance this connection between uh, the both of you. If some of you are interested, you can go to my website and have a look. I'm still doing past life readings. It takes a while for me to do them, but I'm still doing them. Um, you could definitely um, order a past life reading. Just have a look at the description if that's something that you would like to know. Because there are certain reasons why this person is in your life right now. And sometimes, you know, knowing why are they here, is there something like a lesson that needed to be learned? Um, this is something that comes through those readings usually. All right, Sagittarius. That is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity and some guidance. Do let me know in the comments below if any of this resonated. All right then. You take care and stay safe. Bye now.